had so many disasters coming. Man, are you kidding? <laughs> Let's get this party started. It was the greatest night in pop history. The world's biggest music stars came together under one roof to record a song for charity. One, two. We are the world. We are the children. Sounds like a recipe for harmony, right? Well, think again. Behind the scenes of We Are the World, tensions were running high. Egos the size of the state of Texas clashed. And some singers downright hated the experience. Sure, We Are the World was a global sensation, raising millions for famine relief in Africa. Dawn, and as the sun breaks through the piercing chill of night on the plain outside Corum, it lights up a biblical famine. But what we all didn't see were the diva tantrums, simmering rivalries and personality clashes with more drama than your average telenovela. The claws came out and the drama was ridiculously real, all threatening to tear the entire project apart. These Hollywood superstars were told to check their egos at the door, but it appears some people snuck them right past security. So who hated We Are The World and why? Join us as we dive deep into the untold stories and behind the scenes secrets of one of the most iconic charity singles of all time. You won't want to miss this. One January 1985 night, vocal powerhouses and superstars like Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, Cyndi Lauper, Bruce Springsteen, Billy Joel, and 36 others had just that night to create the musical magic that would hopefully raise money to help the famine in Ethiopia at the time. The song, written by Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, was produced by Quincy Jones. The goal was to raise enough money by creating worldwide appeal. And that they did. They raised over $80 million. For once, it needed to be all about the money. And they nailed that. The results were mind-blowing, and we all know numbers don't lie. The song also won three Grammy Awards in 1986, including Song and Record of the Year. As great as all that sounds, the real drama starts at the very beginning. In a room full of award-winning stars and superstars, naturally everyone wanted to shine the brightest. But, I mean, one song can only have so many verses, right? As much as everyone would have loved to hog a verse to themselves, it simply was not possible. There's also the group of persons who didn't get a line at all but got only the chorus. And let me just tell you, it did not sit well with some of your faves. American singer and drummer Sheila E. is one of those. She toured as an opening act for musician Prince, and the two eventually started dating and were engaged at some point. Homegirl Sheila talks about feeling disrespected and waiting hours to record the song. Talked to him throughout the night while we were, you know, singing and getting things together, and then it was getting later and later because I was promised I was going to sing one of the solos, and it got later and later, and it, it just never happened, and that's when I felt like, well, okay, well, we're already done. I was just sitting around for hours waiting, and I just thought, I can't even keep my eyes open anymore, and I felt very hurt and disrespected, and I left. It kind of sounds like she's not gotten over it. She did jump on the chorus, though, and that is everyone's favorite part, right? On the plus side, nobody has come out to accuse her of being difficult to work with. We can't say the same for pop icon Cyndi Lauper. We hear that Cyndi was reportedly the most difficult to work with. Cyndi Lauper gave us these familiar lines. The American singer-songwriter, popular for her hit song, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, also supposedly hated the song. At the bottom of this is Quincy Jones, who produced the song. Here's how it went down. It turns out that Cindy let it slip to her manager that she was not a fan of the song. Uh, my question is a two-parter. Um, what did you think of the horrendous interview that Quincy Jones did, where he said that you were the biggest pain in the ass during the We Are The World recording? And well, he also said that Marlon Brando slept with Richard Pryor. He's crazy. I, you know what? Uh, Richard Pryor actually never made any qualms about being bisexual, right. I think. Um, right. And Richard Pryor was the, to me, the greatest. I got to meet him once yeah. at, towards when he was getting sick. The whole Quincy Jones thing actually... The jewelry was a pain in the ass. I didn't realize it. I've always been polite to him, though. And I never would to say to him that I hate the song. I told my manager that he shouldn't have told the guy. <laughs>
How do we even begin to dissect that? She does come forward to explain that it sounded a little similar to the UK All-Star Charity single released a few months earlier. You know what? I thought, you know, I heard we say feed the world, yeah. and I kind of got so into that that, you know, we are the world, you know, it reminded me, it, it was catchy though. Yeah. And you know, I was on- A lot of uh, bracelets. Oh, is that, uh. oh, my earrings. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I'm loaded. <laughs> Whatever the case, we can all agree to disagree. In fact, Cindy's part was the most memorable, as she didn't shy away from belting out and nailing those notes. If you had a proper pop icon like Cyndi Lauper on a song this massive, one would also expect the presence of the queen of pop, Madonna. Word around town says that Madonna was snubbed from the entire thing on purpose. Niall Rogers, who worked closely with Madonna as the producer of Like a Virgin, hints in a 2020 interview that Madonna wasn't invited to sing on the recording because she wasn't wanted. And it was a slap in the face. I know she felt bad. So now it comes time, the closing number for um, Live Aid is We Are the World. And Madonna says, I wasn't good enough to sing on the record. Well, I'm not singing the finale. And so she comes out, she does her set, We Are the World, bang, she's gone. Can someone please tell me what to make with all of this tea? Because Lionel tells an almost similar story. And you kind of feel bad for our favorite girl, Madonna. Let me say this now, a half a line. So we had to have voices that people knew right away. And so for whatever reason, and by the way, we didn't know whether Cindy was coming. Because mm -hmm. at the show, I said to Cindy, are you coming? And she said, I spoke to my boyfriend and he says, he doesn't think it's a hit. And I said, don't miss the session. You make, she, gave her good advice. I, and she showed up and killed it. But yeah. the point was, you have to have an identifiable voice. And a Whatever reason, it was just Cindy had that wow, 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 you know. Right. That was it. And so. But we, you couldn't have both of them? You know, it's hard you to. You guys made a mistake. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this now on national uh, and international television. You're right. You're right. We made a mistake. Oddly enough, Madonna, who's always so vocal about a lot of things and where she stands, doesn't seem to care enough about it to make a statement on the topic. Maybe we should find her answer in that silence because it is loud. Also conspicuously missing from the entire project was singer-songwriter, actor, and dancer Prince. That was a mouthful, but he was so ridiculously talented that we had to cut the list short. Prince and Michael Jackson had attained major iconic levels in their respective careers, so it just made sense that Prince was on the song since Michael was on it. Rumor has it that Prince was a no-show specifically because of Michael Jackson. But inside sources, also known as Lionel Richie, who impressively managed all the stars for the night, let us in on the weird request that Prince made to be on the song. Believe me, it was one of my heartbreaks of the whole thing. Well, he was at Carlos and Charlie's, true story. Okay. And I kept calling. I was not going to let it go. And I said, let me try one more time. Prince, we need you down here. He says, can I have a separate room to record in? Because you know Prince. Yeah. And I but said, that's not I, how it was. I can't give you a separate room. And then I made the worst mistake. I said, listen, I'll put you right next to Michael. Yep, you heard what we heard. Starboy wanted to record his solo in a separate room to avoid his co-stars. According to Sheila E., one reason Prince wasn't there was that there was a lot of people in one room and he simply would have been uncomfortable. The regal prince simply could not bring himself to mingle with his fellow stars. But if you know anything about Prince Rogers Nelson, you know that this was not a weird thing by any means. Didn't want to be next to any of us, it's I the see. truth of the matter. Because, no, you know, Prince was the isolationist. You know, yeah, he was like, right. I'm going to be in my cubicle, so we didn't work like that. Uh -huh, we yeah. had everyone to stand next to each other. There's Paul Simon, there's Bob Dylan. Yeah, so we, check your ego at the your door, ego right? The back street somewhere, you know. So you can't just say, I'm going to let it happen. So I said, all right, I'll call you later. And you never Click. called that back? That was the end of it. That's, really? Yeah, it was happening right there. More chaos erupted as the night went on because where there are stars, you can bet your bottom dollar that there'll be drama. At some point during the recording, Stevie Wonder burst out singing the song in Swahili. As it turns out, Stevie felt it was important to incorporate the language spoken in the country that the money was being raised for into the track. I mean, how adorable. 
But country music star Waylon Jennings did not find it amusing. He did not understand the language, and he stormed right out the door with zero attempts at looking back. And no, he didn't come back. We should give him points for effort, shouldn't we? About the Swahili verse, though. Thankfully, someone was gracious enough to inform Stevie that Swahili was not the language spoken in Ethiopia. Thankfully, they dropped that like a hot piece of coal. But his heart was in the right place, and that has to count for something.